Welcome to our webinar, Is the Cloud Right for You? Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Susan Hope Bard, the Training and Education Manager here at TechSoup. We're excited that you're here with us today for this webinar. It is important for us to continue to provide you with webinars that help you in your nonprofit or library. So I do want to thank you in advance for helping us by continuing to give us feedback in our survey which you'll see at the end of the webinar. I'm going to go over using ReadyTalk to make sure everyone is comfortable with using the platform. Um, in the lower left-hand corner there is a chat box. This is there for you to let us know if you have any problems either viewing the screen or hearing the audio. The chat box is also for your questions. You don't need to hold on to your questions until the end where we have a Q&A session. You can feel free to chat your questions in at any time. If you lose your internet connection, you can reconnect using the link in your registration or reminder email. If you're hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having any issues with the audio, you can dial in using the toll-free line listed in your registration email or in the phone number that uh, Becky just chatted out. This presentation is being recorded. Uh, you will be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar page in about a week. This is where we share all of our webinar recordings and announce upcoming events. So we want you to check it out at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also review all of our recorded webinars and videos on our YouTube channel. And that's at www.youtube.com slash TechSoup video. In a few days you will receive an email with a link to the recorded presentation as well as any resources that we share with you today. If you are following along with Twitter, you can tweet us at TechSoup or use hashtag TSWebinars. And I'd like to introduce you to our presenter today. Uh, Linda Whittup is the Director of Technology Services at Tech Impact. And there she manages all aspects of client relations including providing nonprofits with project plans and budget development, implementation oversight, and resource allocation for projects. With recent advances in, in cloud computing, Linda is focusing on moving nonprofits to leverage cloud solutions to lower IT costs while gaining access to best-of-breed technology. During the past 20 plus years, Linda has worked in manufacturing, corporate, and retail environments on her way to the nonprofit world. She has trained thousands and provided IT consulting and implementation services to hundreds of individuals and organizations. She is truly a delight to work with, and I know you will greatly enjoy her presentation today. Um, also joining us is Becky Wiegand on the back end, and she'll be here to answer all of your technical problems or questions. If you have any problems hearing or viewing the presentation, you can just chat that in. Our objectives today, we want to help you understand and analyze the benefits and features of cloud-based products. We want to help you access TechSoup cloud-based products, and we also want to answer your questions. Before I turn it over to Linda, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about TechSoup. TechSoup is headquartered in lovely San Francisco, California, and I'd love to know where you're joining us from. So take a minute to type in your location in the chat box. Test out that chat box right now. So while you're doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about TechSoup. We're a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. And we work to empower organizations around the world to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources to help them achieve their mission. You can see from our map before that we serve almost every country in the world. The need is global, and we also have a dedicated website for those folks that are from outside of the U.S. We've helped organizations get more than $5 billion in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. Those tech products and grants come from more than 100 corporate and foundation partners. And I can see we've got quite a few folks. We've got folks from Florida, Connecticut, New York, Indiana, West Virginia. That's great. We have almost all of the country represented, and Florida. 
great. All right. Well, I am going to now turn over the presentation to Linda. Linda, the floor is yours. Thanks, Susan. We're going to have to rewrite that intro that you have. It makes me blush every time. It makes me sound like I do way more than I do. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Um, the topic for today is cloud solutions and um, how they're transforming the way nonprofits work. So we wanted to give kind of an overview of cloud and, and it, you know, demystify the cloud a little bit and dive into some solutions that are um, readily available to nonprofits and also affordable. A little bit about us. Um, I work for a nonprofit organization called Tech Impact. Um, please note that uh, this is our staff. They're on the roof of the building and down in the little V there, that's Peanut the office dog. Uh, she'll be making an appearance on tomorrow's webinar about um, Azure Services. Our mission here is to empower communities and nonprofits to use technology to better serve our world. In other words, our mission at Tech Impact is to help you meet your mission through the use of technology. We do that in a lot of different ways. We're a 501c3 nonprofit just like you. We serve, um, actually I should update that, we serve over 200 nonprofits with managed IT support services. So we provide help desk and proactive support to um, nearly 4,000 end users on a daily basis. We have network engineering teams in place to help you with um, server projects and moving to cloud infrastructure and that kind of a thing, which we'll talk about today. Um, we also do a lot of work with Microsoft Office 365. Again, that's part of our topic today, and we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you about that. So that we do service delivery for nonprofits, but we also have a workforce development pro, uh, program in four cities, or in three cities now, sorry, including um, Philadelphia, Wilmington, Delaware, and Las Vegas, Nevada, where we do job training skills, technology training skills for young people, internships, and workforce development. Um, I mean, um, job placement services. So a little bit about me, um, I think, Susan beat this, uh, beat this to death. So um, I've been with not, uh, Tech Impact for 13 years now and doing webinars like this for probably 10 years with TechSoup. So let's jump in and talk about nonprofit uh, typical nonprofit technology needs. So there's kind of four areas that we're, we'll be covering um, today. So <clears throat> maybe this scenario resonates with you. My nonprofit needs to be able to work from whenever, wherever, and on the go. Increasingly in today's world, we're not nine to fivers, as, you know, in, especially in the nonprofit world. We're working morning, noon, and night. Um, we're out in the community. We're trying to get work done um, for our constituents wherever we can. So what's the benefit of using cloud technology? Well, we, we want to be able to track tasks, edit reports, and, and do all of our work from wherever we are. So maybe that's you. How about this one? Um, my nonprofit needs to communicate with staff and volunteers. So working, you know, because everybody's working from wherever, for instance, I'm working from home today. I work for, from home three to four days a week now um, from my home office, but I still need to be in touch with my staff and my clients, and how do I do that? I do that through the use of communication tools like this handsome young man on the phone here. Um, but I also use tools like Skype for Business and, and web meetings like this one. We provide webinars and, and that kind of a thing. All done through cloud. Uh, another scenario, uh, my nonprofit needs to engage with and retain donors, members, and volunteers. And how do we do that? Well, we do that with good database, um, good database structures and ability to access that data from wherever we need to access that data from. And why is that important? It's important because we want to increase our revenue either through funders or contracts or whatever by connecting with our constituent base. 
And finally, another the last scenario, my nonprofit needs to understand and drive impact, right? So how do we use data in today's world and do things like have information at our fingertips using dashboards and interactive visualization charts? It's all done through modern technology and the use of cloud computing. So with that, let's talk about making the case for cloud. I've been here, I've been in technology for, oh gosh, more than 25 years. I've been in the nonprofit space for 13 years. And over the course of that time that I've been in this space, I've seen the nonprofits using technology, you know, in the what we what we now call the bad old days. The bad old days when I started with Tech Impact, nonprofits were really struggling with technology. I mean, everything was old. A lot of things were still being done on paper. Um, anything that had technology was so expensive and kind of out of reach for for nonprofits that we relied on things like donations and and we were kind of you know backwards. So this chart shows you the orange line would be you know a, a regular typical business, a small business, and their use of technology over time. That blue line there shows the nonprofits are 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 below the for profits up until about 2012 or 2013, and all of a sudden our blue line skyrockets. Why is that? The answer is well, I'll give you a hint. It's in the sky, it's puffy, and it looks like this, right? How do we take, how do we go from being behind the curve to being out in front by leaps and bounds in just a few short years? The answer is. The cloud. The cloud has enabled nonprofits to um, move ahead of the curve. How how is this possible? Well, the reason that cloud is a positive impact on nonprofits is because there's nothing to own. So whereas in the past, if a nonprofit came to me and said, "Linda, I need email or file storage or a database or whatever." That meant that I had to go to my network engineers and say, hey, guys, we need to spec out a server and get it set up and find the software and install it and maintain it, et cetera. And that server was costing somewhere between two and $5,000 for most of our nonprofits, and it's hard to come up with that money. The cloud is low cost, and I'll talk about why the cloud is low, low cost um, in a couple slides from now. There's rapid deployment because we don't have to wait for the network engineers to find the you know buy the server, have it delivered, install it, et cetera, et cetera. We can jump onto new technologies very quickly simply by subscribing to a cloud solution. Ability to scale is another reason. Ability to scale means you know when we have five new five new employees join the organization. We're not having to go to our networking team and say we need another server because our old server is out of space or we need a new telephone system because our telephone system can't handle the five, uh, you know, five more extensions and voicemails on it. So it's easy to do that with cloud. We just you know, add more licenses and we're done. Availability. Um, you know, cloud is available anywhere. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can connect to all the services that you need, rather than having to come into the office and connect to that server and not be able to work from home, not be able to work if the power goes out. So availability is, is another benefit. Mobility. A lot of the um, solutions that we're talking about today come with mobile apps, so we can, we can connect via a cell phone if we're out in the field or whatever. The cloud has better security than um, a typical nonprofit server environment where we are responsible, no longer are our engineers responsible for setting up the security on the server and the VPN access and making sure that's all, you know, right and monitoring for threats and all of that. Our cloud provider does all of that for us, and believe me, they've spent billions of dollars making sure that the cloud is secure. 
They also provide backup and disaster recovery. And for us, we're able to use less powerful workstations. So we no longer need a workstation that's got a giant hard drive in it to store all of the programs, et cetera. We simply connect to using a browser and, and we'll be, we're able to work. So how can the cloud be affordable to nonprofits? One word for this is competition. <clears throat> the cloud services have come a long way. And that, again, I'll, I'll use like, for, it, for example, internet is a great place to start. Back in 2000 whatever, you know, 2000, 2001, 2002, we were, um, helping nonprofits get connected to internet using, you know, DSL services, or we were still, some of them were still using dial-up and DSL. Back then, that DSL connection was really small. It was like one megabyte or, or set not even a half a megabyte connection, and you, we were paying around $80 a month for that. Today, we've got 100 times that speed, and we're still paying around $100 a month. So. Why is that? Because the cable companies, the fiber companies, all of the, all of the internet service providers that are in your area are in fierce competition with one another. They've laid all the lines, they've run all the cable and the fiber, and they've done all the network upgrades that they require to make the speeds go faster and faster at the same rate. They're offering double, you know, double bundle packages and triple plays and all of that just to outcompete each other. So for that reason, your price has stayed the same and your service has, you know, gone faster by a hundredfold. <clears throat> for cloud services, data centers, uh, your cloud providers are also in competition with each other. So they're building out data centers. They've invested billions of dollars to, invest, to build out data centers that are state-of-the-art data centers that provide all of this service. They've done billions of dollars worth of research and development on the software programs and security and functionality and features and usability and all of those things to put out the best product possible. And again, they're in competition with each other. With each other. They want your business. These are all cloud solutions that are developed for commercial use. They want customers and they want a lot of them. But they also have a philanthropic commitment. And this is what um, really plays into our hands. So these companies like Microsoft and Google and Salesforce and Box and, all, and, and many, many others that are out there, too, too numerous to name at this point, have spent lots of money trying to get everything operational for their for-profit companies, and yet they have a, phil a philanthropy department that they're committing to. For instance, Microsoft is committing to $1 billion worth of cloud services donations in using Microsoft Office 365, Azure Dynamics, CRM, and, and other offerings. Google has offered up Google Apps and AdWords and Google Earth and YouTube and Google Ad Analytics to nonprofits at, you know, at a donation. Salesforce.com has a donation. And this is all possible because they have the infrastructure in place, they have a philanthropic bent, they want to combine the two, and they kind of want to stick it in each other's eye to say, hey, we've got a, you know, we gave away a billion dollars. Oh, yeah, we gave out $2 billion, right? So it's like this competition between them, which is really helps us as nonprofits to um, go ahead of the curve. And that's really why that spike in that um, technology use has happened. And if you feel like you're still at the bottom of that, don't worry. You'll go ahead very soon because you'll adopt some cloud, um, some cloud systems soon. So one of the things that moving from an in-house server to cloud solutions does for us is as a nonprofit, it helps us move away from capital expenditures. So those big major expenses that happen every five to six to seven to eight years where we have to go and, and figure out how are we going to get ten or $20,000 or more to 
upgrade our systems, whether it be our exchange server, our file server, or, or our, you know, finance, uh, our um, donor database. If it's sitting on a server, every few years we've got to go out and we've got to do this major expense. And then over time, you know, it kind of gets depreciated and then everybody forgets about it and five or six years later we're like, holy, you know, whatever. Um, now we've got to go and, and get this money again. Using cloud switches that around a little bit. By using cloud, instead of having this major expense every couple of years, you're on a constant subscription price, and that constant subscription price is um, adjusted only based on usage. So we know that every time we add a, you know, another user or another program, it may either keep the price the same or increase the price slightly, and we can factor that in. So it's a predictable expense over time because it's operating expense. Now, that might be a good or, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Some funders like to buy servers for their constituents rather than fund operational expense. But hopefully, as we see um, during the presentation today, we'll see that the operating expense is actually so low in, in many cases that a nonprofit can absorb that cost. So let's talk about some cloud solutions for nonprofits. And, and I'd like to start out with, you know, moving to the cloud. Why move, it, move to the cloud? Because we want you to improve your business. And this graphic is here to say, that for small organizations, we want to lower your equipment cost, make it, you know, get a predictable budget, and be less dependent on the IT provider. For mid-sized organizations, the same is true. Um, and then for large organizations, we want to provide access, you know, from anywhere so that it's easier for the IT administrator to um, maintain and operate. So. In the graphic here, what we're saying is move away from that lower left corner where we have a lot of focus, time and effort and energy spent on maintaining this thing. Let's move that, those functionalities to cloud and start to work on now it frees up our time and money to focus on evolving our business. And, and by that we mean let's take a look at using those resources that we're saving to find better outcomes for our constituents, et cetera. And why is that important for today? Because we're noticing, I know I, we're noticing at Tech Impact, and I'm pretty sure you'll notice the same thing, that your board and funders want to support high-performing organizations. And the way that we're looking at how that happens, and, and so how do we make that happen, is through three things, mobility, agility, and metrics. So we want our users to be mobile. We want our programs to be agile. We want to be able to take on, you know, as we see opportunities in, to make improvements in the community, we want to be able to make that happen, so we need to be agile and we need the metrics to show the good work that we've actually done. So how are we going to show and prove that we're doing um, really good work in the community by having things like reports and dashboards that, that give us that information really quickly? Cloud services are more likely to be able to meet these three, um, these three goals than a server-based program would be. And here's why, right? So with mobility, your users gain access to information hosted on the cloud accessed by any Internet-connected device, whether it be Wi-Fi or mobile, you know, cell, cell phones or whatever. Agility. You subscribe to cloud systems. You're only paying for the usage. And your vendors upgrade and adapt the cust to customer requests. So this is the really cool thing. Every time a vendor hears a need from a you know one of their customers like hey we need this thing changed or we need added functionality or features they just do that for you 
And you don't have to go through a huge project to get a new server and upgrade the software and do all that stuff. It just happens. One day you log in and there's new functionality added. And with metrics, your data systems are tuned to provide dashboards. So the, the vendor knows how to get your information in and out so that it's easy for you and, and, and provide you with flexible reporting in that way. So let's take a look at what the cloud looks like. Um, so um, I've gotten these a, a couple of slides from Microsoft because they've been kind enough to provide them for me. So if you ever wondered what the inside of the cloud looks like, it looks like this. <laughs> it's a big warehouse in the middle of somewhere. This warehouse happens to be in Dublin, Ireland. So it's a giant warehouse and it's got all kinds of security and climate control and all of that stuff. And inside the warehouse, it looks like this. So on the left hand side, we're seeing pictures of container trucks. These are the same kind of, these are similar to the container trucks that you see riding down the highway um, near your office or your home. Inside each one of the container trucks, if we look at the right-hand picture, are rows and rows of, of servers, right? Just mountains and mountains of servers. And this is what provides all of the services for Microsoft Office 365 and Azure Cloud Services and, and Microsoft Dynamics CRM. All of that, you know, your email, your files, et cetera, everything that you're using are all on these servers inside of these container trucks which are positioned in data centers which are located all around the world. So Microsoft has all this built out. They're using this for their commercial customers and they're providing the same data centers, the same trucks, and the same servers to you for, for free, whereas their commercial um, customers are paying for um, those services. In Microsoft's case, your information is, I'm going to go back to this one, your information is moved every 30 seconds from one server to another, from one data uh, truck to another, from one data center to another, with no fewer than 10 copies. So there's your disaster recovery and your availability. It's all built, and your security, it's all built into their system. Now, if a few of the servers on this particular truck, you know, or need to be refreshed or, you know, something goes wrong, they just automatically turn them off. And when a certain percentage of them go bad, they don't call a network engineer. They call a truck driver. And the truck driver just kind of comes in, takes the truck away, and puts a new truck in. So they've got this, you know, really great system. And, and, and many of the data centers operate like this. It's not just Microsoft. It's just that they, they're the ones that gave me the slide. So what types of, what, you know, what do we mean by types of cloud, right? So what is, we've heard about many different kinds of cloud services. So I'm going to try to break that down for you really quickly. Um, my coworker Sam put this together. I love that he's got like the, the cumulus nimbus cloud in there. <laughs> But we're really only going to talk about the top three. We're going to talk about IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS, and what those things mean. So here they are. SAAS, Software as a Service. This is the most common type of um, cloud service that we, that we all connect to. Um, you know, if you have got a Facebook account or a Gmail account or an Office 365 account or, um, you know, any of those, these are software as a service. Software as a service means that the vendor provides a system or application to you that you connect to through a web browser. You pay for that on a license or subscription basis, or you don't pay for it because they give it to you for free. And everything is already done for you. You just use the thing as it is. Some examples of that for nonprofit business use is our Office 365 from Microsoft, Salesforce.com, Google Apps, Box, NetSuite, Adobe Creative Cloud. All of these <coughs> services are software as a service because you just log into them. The other 
one, uh, another one is called infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service means that the vendor provides a cloud-based server to you that you can use to host your own application. So you need a network engineer to build out that, that server for you and load the applications on it. And you pay the vendor per month based on the amount of server power that you need. So how much of the processor and memory and storage and what they call IOs, how many, P, how many connections, um, whether you need the VPN and the security package, all of that adds up to a monthly fee that you pay to use that. Some examples of that that are available for nonprofits are Microsoft Azure or and Amazon Web Services. The third one is platform as a service. Platform as a service means that not only are, is there a server that you can build out, but you can also use a platform to allow you to develop your own application and run and maintain your own applications without building out the infrastructure. So there's a couple of, again, a couple of uh, examples of that are Microsoft Azure, Force.com, which is the underlying platform that Salesforce is run on, and um, a new one from Amazon called Beanstalk. So which tools do we need to connect to the cloud? Well, we need to have an Internet connection, right, Wi-Fi or, or, or Ethernet or cell phone. We need to have an internet connected device like a you know compu a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. We need to have productivity suites using either Microsoft Office 365 or Google Apps. This is going to give you your email and your file sharing and that kind of stuff. Uh, file storage and, and sharing, again, SharePoint, which is part of Office 365, Google Drive, or Box.org. Um, you could, if you need to have a server, as infrastructure as a service, you're going to use Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services. Communications, you can use Skype or Google Groups or Hangouts. Um, online meetings, again, you're going to use Skype for Business, WebEx, or you know something like GoToMeeting. And then with voice communications, you can move to a hosted PBX with remote office features to allow um, connection with cloud. Cloud productivity uh, solutions that are available to nonprofits, this is the, you know, kind of the, the big part of the um, program today. Talking about cloud productivity. Cloud productivity are use, usually SaaS applications, software as a service, and there are three that are available right now to nonprofits that are either free or reduced fees. The one that's on the left here we're going to talk about a lot, Microsoft Office 365. Microsoft Office 365 is right for you if you want a familiar look. In other words, your office, you know, your staff are familiar with Microsoft Outlook and Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and they want to continue to use those programs and just move to a cloud platform to do that. If you need a robust email server such as Microsoft Exchange or you're familiar with a Microsoft Exchange server that allow you to do things like um, have shared calendars and set your out of office and, and do those higher level email things. If you want security that you want that, that is HIPAA compliant or compliant with other um, like PCI and, and that kind of stuff, or you want added security because you're you want to make sure that confidential information remains confidential, we can do that by adding additional features within Microsoft Office 365 to do that. And you want to have information available um, and synchronized from a local computer to the cloud. Microsoft Office 365 handles all of that. Another one that's available to, and to, to nonprofits is Google Apps. Again, Google Apps has familiarity, right? If 
if you've got staff who are familiar with the Gmail interface and the Google interface and they want to continue to use that, you can use Gmail, but as a business so that you're not at gmail.com, you're at whatever you are .org, um, you can go ahead and do that. If you need to be have a robust um, platform that's more than just email, you can also get that with Google. So you can do um, file sharing at, with Google Apps and Google Drive. You can also get other features that are available for nonprofits at a donation, including micro, uh, I'm sorry, Google AdWords. The Google AdWords, um, Google I think gives you ten thousand dollars a month worth of AdWords for free. Google Earth, if you wanted to do more in-depth, you know, mapping of your constituent base or your services, um, <clears throat> analytics for your website, and a YouTube channel, you can do all that through the Google for Nonprofits offer. The third one is Box.org. Box.org is a file sharing platform, so it's not as robust as the other two but it's simple. So if you need just simple file sharing and you're already covered with email and, and the other things and you just need a cloud-based file share, Box might be right for you. Box also integrates with Office 365. So if you're using Microsoft Office 365 for email and Skype, but you're not sure if you want to move to SharePoint Online because you don't think that your organization is big enough to do that, you can also get Box.org and then integrate it with Microsoft Office 365. The nice thing about what's the information on this slide is that all of the things that you're looking at are donated or discounted to nonprofits. <clears throat> and you don't have to pick one and stick with it. You can do a combination. So for instance, we use at Tech Impact, we use Microsoft Office 365 very heavily. We use the email, the file sharing, the Skype, the Yammer, we use all the functionality. We use in the enhanced security features, all the functionality of Office 365. But we also use a Google grant for the AdWords and the analytics and the YouTube channel and that kind of a thing. Um, <coughs> and occasionally we use Box.org um, for some file sharing with external constituents. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Office, Microsoft Office 365 because I think it, it is, in, in our experience, it is the preferred productivity platform for nonprofits. Um, we've done hundreds and hundreds of migrations to Office 365 for nonprofits across the, uh, across the globe, actually. Um, and, and why is that? Well, I talked about it a little bit on the last slide. It's the familiarity with those programs that um, we're used to. So it's Outlook, it's Microsoft Word, it's Excel, and it's all of that through a cloud um, interface. So here's what you get for your donation. You, each user gets a 50 gigabyte email box connected to Exchange Server. That Exchange email box is av um, available through Outlook, Outlook web app, or mobile device allows your users to share their calendars and mailboxes and do some collaborative things within email. It also gives simple file sharing with SharePoint Online, which SharePoint Online is an intranet that allows you to do file sharing and much more using web apps to edit and create documents online, um, allows your team to collaborate. So two or three or four or 15 people can work on the same document at the same time, allows you to do um, things like uh, post information on an intranet site and have everybody have discussion boards and that kind of thing. Also allows you to do personal storage using OneDrive for Business. OneDrive for Business gives each user a one terabyte um, shared space or uh, one terabyte of storage space online that can be synchronized to local computer. It allows your team to use Skype for Business for web conferencing, presence management, instant messaging, video conferencing, uh, video calling, and, and much more. So we use at, at 
Tech Impact, we use Skype for Business a lot to communicate with our coworkers. We do video calls a lot. Um, group conversations using Yammer. Yammer allows you to do a, pri a, a private um, social network to do things like post, you know, if you wanted to do something really cool like post a photo of one of the constituents or volunteers or something like that, um, you know, give a shout out to or praise a coworker for doing something really great that you can do all that through Yammer. And you it also includes web apps, uh, web versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook. So for organizations who might have people that are on the go, we don't even need to load those programs on the local machine. We can just use web apps. You can get installed versions of those programs. Um, that's not the full donation. You have to pay a little bit of money. I think it's two dollars. It, I know it is. It's two dollars per user per month. We'll give you the full version of all of those Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, Publisher, and all the rest that you get with Microsoft Office Professional Plus for two dollars per user per month. And that user can install those programs on up to five devices, including mobile devices. So in some cases, it's worth the $2 per user per month. If you'd like to know more about Microsoft Office 365 or Box or many other things at Tech Impact, go on to our techimpact.org slash events and register for a free online demo. We demo Microsoft Office 365 every other Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So, And I think that's going to happen this coming Thursday, the 20th. So. If you want to see it in action, please sign up for the free online demo. If you can't make it, there's recordings of those demos um, if you go to our resources page. So I'm going to stop there for a quick minute. Um, Susan, are, are there any questions bubbling up in the background before we move on to the infrastructure as a service? Uh, yes, thanks. We've gotten a lot of really, really great questions. Um, one of them is about confidential files and the cloud. And I think you covered it a little bit, um, but there are some folks who work with extremely confidential information, and they just were inquiring about the, the security of those files. Mm -hmm. So right, so that's a, it is always a, a great question to ask about how secure are my files. So with Microsoft Office 365, you go to the Microsoft Trust Center, and you can read all about the security and their privacy policy. Microsoft will sign a business associates agreement with you um, to keep all of your information confidential. Um, read online about their subpoena policies and whether that affects you or not. But as far as, as in terms of sec pure security, it's more secure than having a file server in your office. And um, I, I can do a lot of explanation about that. But um, you, you're going to set security groups up, allow people to have access to this, that, or the other thing. And you can also upgrade your licenses for an extra dollar sixty-five per user per month. You can add even higher level of security so that a user doesn't accidentally or on purpose forward information outside of your organization. So an example of that, I have a spreadsheet that's got all my client information on it. I attach that to an email and I send it to somebody that shouldn't get it. If you use Enterprise Mobility Suite, that spreadsheet will not attach. If there's an external recipient's name on that, it will go out to everybody else, but it won't go out to the external recipient. If I say, well, that's not a problem, I'll just copy and paste. So I copy the information out of the Excel spreadsheet and I paste it somewhere, it won't paste. It just won't paste. It won't paste into Word. It won't paste into another Excel spreadsheet. It won't paste into an email. You just can't paste it. So there's plenty of ways to um, make Keep your confidential information very confidential, and, and we're happy to help you figure all of that out. Other questions? 
Yes. Um, another question is, what happens if the cloud service goes out of business or there's the facility catches on fire and burns down? What, what options do our learners have? Right. So there's, there's mm -hmm. kind of two questions, right? So first of all, make sure that you, you do your due diligence when selecting a cloud service provider. The ones that we're talking about now are major corporations and they've got redundant data centers. So if one data center burns down or two or three data centers burn down, your stuff is still will still be available to you. You might have a slight disruption in service, but your stuff will still be available. But in terms of what happens if an organ, a, a vendor goes out of business, that's, a, that's another really good question. If you find a cloud service that's not one of these big giant ones, Microsoft or Google or Amazon or Salesforce, make sure that, that, that you're reading the terms and conditions of your contract with them, and they should have an escrow clause where they put aside enough money to escrow, into an escrow that will keep their servers and services operational for up to X amount of days. So if they go out of business, if they get bankrupt, if they are, you know, have a cease and desist order, they have enough money in escrow to keep it operational so that you'll have 30, 60, or 90, or 120 days to get your data out of there and find another vendor. Great question. Great. One more question. Um, a couple of folks have asked this. Um, do you have to use Outlook email with Office 365, or can you use Gmail or another email account system? Yep. You, can, you, can't use another account, you can't use another email system. You don't have to use Outlook. You can use Outlook web apps. So if you don't want to install Microsoft Outlook on your computer, you don't have to. You can just go to www.office365.com or dot, yeah, .com and put your username and password in and use a web browser. It's available through any web browser. Thanks. That's it. Uh, we've got a couple other – we have a couple other questions. I think what I will do is let you proceed with the rest of your presentation and catch those up on the end. Okay, great. So we're, we're going to jump out of the – the basic productivity and talk about more the other cloud platforms, right? So we did talk about earlier infrastructure and as a service and platform as a service, and I do want to touch on those really quickly. So <clears throat> let's say you've decided to use Microsoft Office 365 or Google for nonprofits, and you've moved everything off of your server. Your email is off the server. Your file sharing is off the server. What's left? Well, your server probably may have some other things that it's doing. For instance, it may be an Active Directory server. It may provide network services like DNS and DHCP and IP addressing and, and print services. And maybe you've got a legacy database sitting on that, like an access database. Or maybe you've got QuickBooks and you can't move to QuickBooks online. <clears throat> what then? How do I get rid of the server in the closet so that I don't have to purchase that and maintain it and, and all of that stuff. The answer lies in infrastructure as a service. And infrastructure as a service means that you're going to build a cloud server. There's two that are available to non to, there's two that are that are available that nonprofits know about. One of them is Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services have been around for uh, many years and some nonprofits have moved to it. But the cost of that per month is pretty expensive. Microsoft Azure Server has been around for a few years as well. The cost of it is really, you know, is also expensive because you've got to you've got to build out the server and pay for the processor and the and the memory and the storage and all of that stuff. But the good news is that Microsoft has just announced, like three weeks ago, that a, a, a nonprofit offering for Microsoft Azure. And what this is, is a credit. Microsoft will give every nonprofit that qualifies $5,000 per year annual credit to use towards the complete portfolio of Azure services, meaning you can build that server out on the cloud and move your Active Directory there. 
you can do development and testing, you can do big data analytics, you can do all of those things on the Azure services. So when you build that Azure server out, whatever the monthly cost comes out to be, Microsoft will give you a $5,000 credit every year to pay that off. So that's a huge, huge donation from Microsoft and it's just been um, it's just been announced, and it's kind of lighting the, the IT administrator world on fire a little bit, especially those who have aging servers and, and you're trying to figure out how to get rid of them. This is a great way to do that. Um, I, there's a, a webinar that's scheduled on TechSoup that's going to cover just this. And if this is interesting to you, I highly recommend that you jump on that webinar and learn more about it. Sam Chenkin is going to go over all of the things that you see on this slide here, um, talking about you know big data and an analytics and um, business, you know, creating business apps and backup and recovery and and how that can all benefit your nonprofit organization. It's it's really it's the next great thing. So with that, I'm going to jump in and ask, uh, so just a couple of things about how Tech Impact can help you, right? So we do strategic technology planning um, for nonprofits. We do that around cloud services. So we can do a big strategic plan and talk about all your use of technology. But for those of you who are really interested in using cloud but are still maybe a little bit intimidated and want to make sure that you're making the right choice, we can help you by providing you with a strategic cloud uh, planning session. We do tech consultations. You can get that available through TechSoup. We do a lot of Office 365 implementations and ongoing support, et cetera. So with that, I'm going to ask Susan for a little bit, a couple more questions. All right, great. Thanks. Um, we have a question um, about restoring files on the cloud. Um, the question comes from Beth, and she was told that if you need to restore all files on the cloud versus one file at a time, that that is not possible. Is that true? Um, I think the answer to that question depends on the service that you're using. So it, it is, yeah, I mean, it is possible to get all of your data out of some systems if you wanted to download it, you know, and keep a like there, for instance, if you're using a database online, there's like Salesforce.com is an example of this. Many people who use Salesforce.com don't realize that they should be backing up their data on a regular basis. And the reason for that is just like human error, right? Somebody goes in and wipes out a bunch of the information in your Salesforce database. You can't call Salesforce and say, hey, I need my data back. They're going to say, well, somebody deleted it. It's not our problem. Uh, they're not going to be as mean as I just was. They're going to be probably nicer about it. Um, so having a backup, you know, a monthly backup or whatever, you can do that online. Um, but in the in the case of, you know, somebody clicks on a folder in SharePoint and deletes the whole folder, you can work with Microsoft up until a certain point in time, maybe it's 30 days or, you know, whatever it is, to restore all the files that were in that folder. So you can do it. It's just depends on your provider. Thanks. Um, and I think this question is definitely for Tech Impact. Um, there's an organization that wants to migrate to SharePoint. How would they do it without an IT department? Yeah, you should do it with a, a professional. Um, there are many failed instances of SharePoint that, that people come to us and say, we hate SharePoint. And that's usually because they haven't done a project appropriately. We have two ways to help. You can pay us and we will do the project for you. We will take your group through a planning project. We will do the SharePoint implementation and we'll do all the user training that's required to be successful. Or you can do a do-it-yourself workshop where you come to a workshop that's a facilitated workshop and we teach you and give you all the materials that you need to make that happen on your own. You can get the do-it-yourself workshop through TechSoup um, online. I think it's uh, $300 and something dollars for that. 
so we can help you both ways. Thanks, Linda. Um, and one more question um, really about cloud is virus protection. There have been a couple people that are asking about virus protection. So how does that work with the cloud? So each one of your cloud vendors is going to provide virus protection for their particular program. They certainly don't want viruses to infect their data centers. So they provide their own virus protection. But that doesn't mean that you don't need virus protection on your workstation. You absolutely do. So you still need to have uh, antivirus running and maintained and do your scans and do your um, anti-malware pro uh, program and scanning as well to protect your own computer. So here's where you'll get in trouble. If you use Box.org or Dropbox or Microsoft Office 365 OneDrive for Business and you don't have your workstation protected and you get a virus, you will infect not only the local versions of those files, but also the, the, the versions that went on to the cloud. And so you won't be able to use them anymore if they're infected with virus. So you need to protect yourself. Great. Thanks, Linda. I think we have time for one more, and then I'm going to move to just uh, talk a little bit about some of the things we have at TechSoup and um, perhaps some of the more specific questions to specific organizations and numbers of employees we can refer to you directly. Um, this, this one is uh, from Matthew. He's, he heard there was a problem syncing Outlook Calendar on phones. So I believe he's talking about the cloud. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've never had a problem syncing Outlook calendars to any, it doesn't matter, iPhone or Android device. I've never had a problem. Thanks. I, um, I also use Outlook on, on my phone and my iPad, and I haven't had um, any issues. So hopefully that helps answer your question. All right. So I do believe, Linda, if you are finished your presentation, I'm going to move through some of TechSoup's resources. Great. All right. So a couple of things. Um, you can still continue to chat in your questions, and Linda can um, also address some of those individually. And I'll be sure to forward some of the more specific questions about your nonprofit to her um, for response as well. But Linda covered a lot today. There was a lot of information in this presentation if the cloud is right for you as a nonprofit. So take a minute and chat in just one thing that you learned today. And if you are gearing up to exit this presentation, we do want to remind you very quickly to complete the follow-up survey. This will help us continue to develop content that's relevant to you. And a couple of quick things. I think Linda touched base on cloud-based products. TechSoup does have a, a lot of cloud-based products that you can find out more about by going to our website. Um, a couple of things are Box, which uh, Linda covered a little earlier. Um, we also have DocuSign. And we have Tableau, and we will be having a presentation on Tableau in the next few weeks. So we hope you join us for that as well. For those of you who had questions about Azure, um, we will be having a webinar tomorrow on Microsoft Azure. So there's still plenty of time for you to register for that. I tried to chat that out to everyone. And we also have something that's new for TechSoup. We have online courses available for you to take. And you can go to our, our uh, Tech Change partner where we host all of our online courses. And we will chat the link out to you to check out some new courses that we'll be launching today. Again, I mentioned some of the upcoming webinars. Tomorrow is Microsoft Azure. Then we have a couple of presentations. The first one is for libraries, broadband planning for libraries. And then we have the Tableau webinar on the 25th. And on the 26th, we are going to be promoing our Idealware 
um, learning track series all about technology planning for nonprofits. So we do want you to take advantage of those courses that we have on our online platform. You can find out more about them on the 26th. And then Linda will be back to talk about what Microsoft's cloud services can do for your nonprofit on the 27th. So if you enjoyed Linda today, you come back on the 27th. Um, I want to thank Linda for taking the time to put together such an amazing presentation. We will be sending that out to the presentation out to you along with a link to the recording of this presentation in a few days. There will also be a series of links to reference all of the resources both Linda and I mentioned at TechSoup and Tech Impact. I also want to thank Becky on the back end for chatting out a lot of information and responding to some of your questions, and ReadyTalk for being our webinar sponsor. And most importantly, we do value your time. We know it is your most valuable asset. So thanks for joining us today for this hour, and we hope to see you uh, maybe tomorrow on our next webinar. Thanks so much. Have a great day.